G'day everyone, my name's Michael Taylor and welcome to another BMW E46 maintenance vid. If you've owned an E46 BMW for a while now, you've probably heard the word Vanos mentioned a lot. I mean, a real lot. It's talked about pretty much all the time. Why is my E46 doing that? Why is my E46 doing this? Why is my E46 making a hell of a noise? And with all these things, the Vanos seems to cop the blame. But what is the Vanos? What does it do? How does it work? And what are actually some of the problems that the Vanos can cause for your E46 BMW? W. Stick around because in this video I'm going to cut through all the BS and show you exactly what the Vanos is and how it works and hopefully give you some answers in terms of why your BMW E46 is either not performing well or is making a bit of a noise every time you start it up. Let's get straight into it and get cracking. So to explain all this I've got the Vanos, a couple of sockets and a stopwatch. Yep, my challenge is to explain as much as I can about the Vanos on your E46 BMW in 6 minutes and 4 seconds. Hence, the stopwatch. Challenge accepted. So what is your Vanos and what does it actually do? Uh, yeah, the Vanos is that uh, doohickey that runs the thingamajig on the camshaft. Yeah, the Vanos, yeah, that's basically just variable valve timing. What is variable valve timing and why is it so popular in modern car engines? Well, if you've ever pulled up at a set of lights and some guy's pulled up next to you with a lumpy V8 and it's idling like it's about to stall. Coplum, coplum, coplum. Well, the reason for that is they've installed a high performance camshaft in that engine, which is designed to operate at its maximum best in the mid to high rev range. But it doesn't operate so good at the lower end of the rev range. So to overcome this problem, engine manufacturers have come up with this brilliant idea of variable valve timing. In other words, they're able to alter the position of the camshaft to provide varying degrees of timing on the valves to suit different driving conditions. In other words, one set of camshafts for two different applications. Absolutely brilliant. So obviously we're going to look at the way BMW accomplish variable valve timing and they do it using what they call Vanos. So let's answer that number one burning question that's on everybody's mind. What does Vanos stand for? Well, I did a bit of research and the answer is variable knockin wellens doirun. Variable Nocken Velen Sturung. Um, nah. Let's pronounce Variable Nocken Well Sturung. Variable Noc. Uh, yeah, I studied German when I was in uh, grade 7, so. Sturung. Pretty sure that's what it is. Variable Nocken Well and Sturung. Anyway, I'm going to print it so you guys who <laughs> are in Germany or know German. Please feel free to comment in terms of the pronunciation of that last word. And I may even have got knockin' well and wrong. So if you take the VA from variable, the NO from knockin' well and, and the S from strrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
you've got a gasket here. Try not to bend it. And you've got your piston there. So that's that side. When you remove the exhaust side, just be careful there's a spring underneath this. So as you start to take it off, just hold your hand over the top to avoid it flying up and potentially hitting you in the head. Just be a little bit careful with it. There's not a lot of pressure on that spring, so you shouldn't have to be putting a lot of force on it, but just be aware, don't keep your head over it. Those ones that's going to fight you the whole way out. And there you go. You'll notice on the spring there's a fat end and a skinny end. The fat end goes at the bottom when you're putting it back together. There's a little bit of resistance there but it's not like super tight. A few thousand kilometers more and this would need servicing. And I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but when you're working on your BMW, get a set of plastic scrapers. About $30 on eBay, best investment in your mate because you got an aluminium block. So if you're doing the oil pan, your head gasket, valve cover gasket, these are what you need. Give it a good clean using a plastic scraper. And then if you still need a bit of extra oomph, bit of brake cleaner with a green scotch bright to do the final finishing up. Oil pressure is one of the components which helps to make the Vanos work. When the seals start to wear down, they start to let oil past and in the housing, what you're looking for is a really snug fit. I've removed the seals off the exhaust side and they are starting to get hard, so they'd probably benefit from replacing and it would just be that little bit more efficient. So that's what causes your pressure drop and prevents your Vanos from working at 100% when you start to get oil bleed past those seals and it doesn't build up sufficient pressure. The best way I've found to remove these is with a razor blade. The outside one's not too bad, but the other one sort of sits down inside a little bit. So just cut it gently with a razor blade and then you can get your pick underneath. There's my mark. So get your take that one off and then underneath there there's another one so same sort of process so. so without the um o rings in there you can see how loose that is in there so that's the gap that the o-rings are taking up inside here there's some roller bearings or needle bearings and things like that and a couple of washers and they start to wear down and when you hear that noise people complain about noise in their vanos that's what it is now they're rattling around because i've actually loosened this cap off and taken some of the pressure of it it's not that they were stuffed the best way to remove these is to get them in a soft draw vice so you don't damage this piston when you're removing this cap and then you get your electric impact gun with a 24 mil socket, this into a vise, and then just a couple of short bursts. Get this opened up and show you what's actually inside it. What do I need? I need a socket. I'm gonna get back to you. We just take this out, and these are the components which will start to rattle around, and these are the bits you need to replace. So there's your cap, and then the first thing to come out is a washer, and then underneath that, so there's a needle bearing, you see the little rollers there. And then underneath that, a thick washer. And then underneath that, there's another needle bearing. And those components there start to wear out and you get a bit of movement. That's what causes the rattle. Now you can replace it either with a standard kit or there are uprated parts that you can put in it. And then simply what you do is replace the O-ring and the Teflon seal and the O-ring and Teflon seal. When you put your new seals on it, you've got to seat them in. So the way to do that is because it's going to be a tight fit, you'll want to put this in sideways and push it down push it all the way down and then just let it sit. What you're wanting to do is let that uh, those Teflon seals and washers reseat themselves and resize themselves to, to suit the housing. So once you've waited five or ten minutes, remove it and then start the assembly process. Now the last remaining component of your Vanos system is the helical gear. So the helical gears are part of the camshaft timing components. So basically what happens is 
as oil pressures applied or reduced these pistons slide in and out and as they do so they press on the end of the helical gears which twist to either increase or decrease the valve timing to make that all work. The camshaft timing components are a separate issue but you can see the install of the camshaft and the camshaft timing in one of my earlier videos which you can click on here to see how that all goes together and that might give you some additional answers in terms of the Vanos and how it operates but yeah that's how the Vanos works. So there you have it guys, six minutes and four seconds on the Vanos. I hope you got something out of it. Please, if you've enjoyed the video, hit the like button. And if you've got any questions, leave me a comment. Or if you've tackled this job yourself and you've got any additional feedback that you would like to share with our other viewers, please leave me a comment for that as well. If you'd like to see more content about BMW E46 ownership in terms of maintenance, performance upgrades, and to follow the build of my E46 BMW, consider subscribing and ring the bell so you get notified each time I upload a new video. Now in terms of future projects, I've got the radiator going in and a few other bits and pieces to be buttoned down underneath the bonnet. I've got a video coming out in relation to the headlights, bumper bar and front plastic trim. And then it's pretty much a check through on all the performance upgrades prior to doing the startup. Keep your eye out for those as we get closer to Christmas and lead into the new year. So I've enjoyed your company thank you very much for watching but until we meet again look after yourselves stay safe and TTFN